we're going to take a look at one last key feature of the Cartesian plane, and we're going to be looking at the equations of circles in this video. Um, now, remember, a circle is not necessarily going to be a function because it's going to fail that vertical line test. So, um, but we still can be able to find the equations of circles in Cartesian coordinates. So if we have a circle that has a center of, let's just say variable h and k as the x and y coordinates, and then it has a radius of r, we can write that into the standard form of a circle, x minus the x coordinate center squared, plus y minus the y coordinate center squared is equal to r squared. So if we're given the center and radius of a circle, it's pretty easy for us to be able to construct the equation of that circle. So we have this center, 3, 4. So let's let 3 be equal to h and 4 be equal to k and 7 to be equal to r for our radius. And we're just going to plug it in right here. And so that's going to be x minus 3 square plus y minus 4 square is equal to 7 square. All right, so that's our formula, x minus h square, y minus k square equals r square, or another way to write this, x minus 3 square, y minus 4 square equals 49. All right, so that's our equation of our circle. A secondary example, if we have a center of 0, negative 2 and a radius of square root 5, in this case, h is 0, k is negative 2, and r is going to be the square root of 5. And so when we substitute back into our formula, we're going to get x minus 0 quantity square plus y minus a minus 2 quantity square is equal to the square root of 5 squared. Okay. Now we're going to simplify this. Anytime we subtract 0 from anything, it just stays the same. So this is just going to turn into x squared y minus a minus 2 is just going to become y plus 2 quantity square. And then when we square square root, those are inverse operations. So they just go away, and we're going to be left with 5. And this is going to be our equation of a circle that has center 0, negative 2, and radius 5. What if we're given the graph of a circle? And we want to go through and be able to take that graph and to be able to do a number of sort of operations with it. So for instance, we want to find the center, the radius, the equation. And then going back to what we looked at earlier in, the, in our um, program, we had our domain and range. And then the final thing we want to do is determine if the relation's a function and why or why not. All right, so um, for this one, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to be able to find the center of this thing. And remember, the center is going to be the point where everything is equidistant, all right? And this looks like it's going to be a pretty good center right here, all right? So first thing we can do is we could say, okay, well, we just moved one to the left, and then we moved up six units, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I know I hid that number from you when I put in the solid dot there. So it looks like that the center of this circle is going to be at the point negative one, comma six. The radius, the radius is going to be the distance from the center to any point on the graph. And so notice that maybe the easiest way to do this is to just take a line inside of the circle. So that way we touch the circumference of that circle right here. And we just count the number of units that we move down. So we start here and we move one, two, three units down to be able to get there. And notice that if we were to do the same thing and move across, we would move one, two, three units across to the left. If we were moved to the right, we move one, two, three units. And so it seems like that the radius of this circle is going to be three for us, all right? So that's probably the easiest way to find the radius is to just go through, find the center, and just count how many units you have to move to go from the center to, this, to the circumference of that circle, all right? So our radius is going to be three. And so now we can go ahead and put the circle into a standard form. So this is h and k, and this is r. And so we can write this as x minus a minus 1 square plus y minus 6 square equals 3 square. Or another way to be able to write this is going to be x plus 1 square, 
y minus 6 squared equals 9. Domain. Remember, domain is all the possible x values on the graph. So we're going to go back up. And it looks like that the smallest x value on the graph is right here, OK, at this point. And that looks like, to me, that it's going to be the point negative 4 on the x. And then if I go over here, this is going to be the furthest x coordinate. And that looks like, if I was to just draw a line down here, that that's going to end up being 2. And so our domain for this function or for this um, for this graph is going to be negative four inclusive, two inclusive. All right, and I'm going to hesitate in calling it a function until we get down to letter F. Um, for the range, remember the range is the y values. Right. So if I want to find what the y values are, I'm just going to pick the lowest y value on the graph, and then I'm going to pick the highest y value on the graph. All right. So if I do that, right about here. And it's pretty obvious that it's three just by given the graph. And if we go up here, that's going to be nine given the graph. Remember, range always goes in interval notation from the lowest number, which in this case was going to be three. Remember, we just found it up here and then moves all the way up to nine. OK, so our range is three comma nine. And then the last part of this is to determine if this is going to be a, 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 if the relation is a function or if it's not a function. Um, and it's pretty clear that if we were to draw the vertical line, clearly it intersects in more than one place, okay? In fact, we could draw a whole bunch of vertical lines that intersect in more than one place. And we would say that this is not a function and it fails the vertical line test, right? One last example, same exact thing. OK, we're going to find the center, we're going to find the radius, we're going to find the equation, the domain, the range, and then determine if the relation is a function. All right, so the center for this one's pretty easy for us, right? So we go over right four, and then this looks like the point five that we go up to. So it looks like our center is going to be at the point four comma five. Remember, the radius is just going to be the distance from the center to any point. Okay, so if we go from here to here, we move one. And if we were to move up, it just moves one unit. If we were to move down one unit, left one unit from the center. So it looks like the radius for this is going to be one. All right. And remember, four is h, five is k in our formula. And so if we were to generate the equation of our circle, that's going to be x minus four square plus y minus five square is equal to one square. OK, or if I want to simplify that, this is pretty easy. X minus four square, Y minus five square equals one. Since one times one is one. Domain. Domain is going to be the smallest X to the highest X value. OK, so if we do that, we have our smallest X right here, and that just occurs at three. And our, long, our biggest x is going to occur at 5. So the domain is going to be inclusive 3, 5. Range, smallest x, is going to occur, it looks like, at 4. Highest, y, or excuse me, the lowest y value is going to be at 4. The highest y value is going to be at 6. And so it looks like that our range for this is going to be 4, 6. And just like before, if I was to draw a vertical line, in several different places of this relation. It intersects at more than one point. So no, it fails the vertical line test. In fact, no circle is a function, all right? At least in terms of function of X, right? So hopefully this video illustrates how we can go ahead and find the equations of circles and a few of the properties about those equations of circles.